Hello students, in this video we'll discuss Jensen's inequality. Let's consider a function phi, which maps an open interval i into r, so here i is an open interval, okay, such that for all x and y and i, and lambda between 0 and 1, we have that phi of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y is less than or equal to lambda phi of x plus 1 minus lambda phi of y, right? And these functions that satisfy this inequality are called convex functions, right? So here we say that phi is called a convex function. So here phi is a convex function. Of course, geometrically, this inequality means it means that when phi inputs a line segment between x and y, it outputs something that's majorized by a line segment between phi of x and phi of y. So geometrically, what this means is the following. So geometrically, we have the following situation. Here's the x-axis, here's the y equals phi of x-axis. And here's an interval i from a to b. That just says that if this is phi of a, and this is phi of b, then the graph has to look something like this, like that. So in other words, that's the graph of phi of x, and then the graph is always majorized by the endpoints over here. So in other words, that line segment between phi of a and phi of b dominates that. So it's always majorized by that line segment, right? So that's a supporting, that's a supporting line over there. So those are convex functions, right? Of course, we can sort of know, we know from calculus, basic calculus, that convex functions, if there's a sufficient amount of differentiability, then these functions should satisfy that phi double prime of x is greater than or equal to zero. That's the idea from calc one, calc two, that we think about when we talk about convex functions, about in terms of concave, this is like a concave up function, right? Now, what we can get immediately from this is we can induct and get a more general version of this, and so this is the first sort of version of Jensen's inequality. So Jensen's inequality says the following. It says that if lambda 1 plus, plus lambda n add up to 1, and x1 through xn are in the interval i, then we have that phi of lambda 1 x1 plus all the way down to lambda n xn is less than or equal to lambda 1 phi of x1 plus all the way down to lambda n phi of xn. And that's the instance of inequality. And it looks like this first, def it looks like the definition of convexity, except there are more points here, an arbitrary number of points inside the function with the weights of those things, with the lambda 1 through lambda n adding up to be something that's 1. So in other words, it's, four, it's on a simplex essentially, right? And so of course, how do you prove this? Well, the instance of inequality follows from induction on n. So the proof is by induction. So when n is equal to 2, that's just the definition of convexity. That's the definition of convexity. So it's trivial in that case. And so now let's assume it's true for n. So in other words, let's assume that this is true over here. We're going to assume that star is true. And then I want to prove this for n plus 1, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to suppose that lambda 1 plus lambda n plus 1 add up to 1. And then we're going to consider phi of what? We're going to consider phi uh, well, let's do it like this. Let's look at, we're going to look at lambda 1 x1 plus all the way down to lambda n xn plus lambda n plus 1 x n plus 1. Let's consider this expression over here, okay? And then what we're going to do is we're going to actually write this in the following way. We're going to write this as lambda n plus 1, x n plus 1, plus, and I'm going to write this as 1 minus lambda n plus 1, because if lambda n plus 1 was equal to 1, then it would be trivial, because that's the, that would they say there's only one term in the sum, right? So I can assume that lambda n plus 1 is not equal to 1, right? And then the rest of the terms over here, I'm going to write this as a lambda 1 over 1 minus lambda n plus 1, x1, all the way down to lambda n over 1 minus lambda n plus 1, x n, right? So I'm going to rewrite our expression in this form over here. And now I'm going to apply phi to this expression over here. So phi of this first expression over here, so hence phi of lambda 1 x 1 all the way down to what? All the way down to lambda 
n plus 1, x n plus 1 is going to be equal to what? It's going to be equal to phi of this expression over here, right? It's phi of this plus phi of this, right? So now, what can I say? I know that lambda n plus 1 and 1 plus lambda, 1 minus lambda plus 1 are in the... I can use the definition of kind of x because they add up to 1, right? So the, in other words, this is going to be equal to phi of lambda n plus 1 x n plus 1 plus 1 minus lambda n plus 1 times this mess over here. Lambda 1 over 1 minus lambda n plus 1 x1 all the way down to lambda n over 1 minus lambda n plus 1 xn, like so. Okay? And now we're going to use the convexity, right? So by convexity, by the induction, by convexity, I have this. I have lambda n plus 1 phi of x n plus 1. Good. And then what? And then plus 1 minus lambda n plus 1. And then phi of this expression over here. And so what will phi of this expression be over here? Well, now, by convexity, by the induction hypothesis, I know if I add up all these numbers over here, adding up all these numbers over here, I'm going to have to get something that's equal to 1, right? So I can use convexity again, right? Because what's, of course, the, the feature over here? The feature over here is I have, if I add up these numbers, I have lambda 1 plus lambda n, but lambda 1 plus lambda n is 1 minus lambda n plus 1. So those numbers over here and these, these numbers over here all add up to 1, so I can use the induction hypothesis. So by convexity and the induction hypothesis, this is less than or equal to lambda 1 over 1 minus lambda n plus 1 phi of x1 all the way down to lambda n over 1 minus lambda n plus 1 phi of xn. And now we see all these lam 1 minus lambda n plus 1s cancel out, so this is exactly equal to what? This is exactly equal to lambda 1 phi of x1 all the way down to lambda n plus 1 phi of x n plus 1, and that proves the induction that proves Jensen's inequality. Now, of course, the nice thing about this Jensen inequality in this discrete case is it gives us a hint to what Jensen's inequality is in the continuous case. So this is a discrete version of Jensen. So this is discrete, of course, because it's for a finite number of points, right? But let's see what would happen if we did this for a continuous version over here, right? So for con in the continuous case, recall that if I integrate over 0 to 1, that's a space whose weights add up to 1, essentially, of course. And I looked at f of x, like this, dx. This, of course, is just the limit as n goes to infinity. The sum, j goes from 1 to n of f of j over n times 1 over n. And of course, this, these 1 over n's, 1 over n plus 1 over n plus 1 over n plus 1 over n plus 1 over n times add up to 1. So this is a convex combination. That's a convex combination. Okay. And we also know in a previous video, we proved that convex functions on an open interval are continuous functions, right? And now we also know from the theory of Riemann integrability that if I compose a continuous function with a Riemann integrable function, the result is Riemann integrable, right? So we can use some of our tools from analysis to conclude that phi of f for f integrable is also going to be an integrable function, right? Because of the continuity of, of convex functions, right? And so now watch this. So now I know that phi of the integral from 0 to 1 of f of x dx, and I plug this integral into the function, this is phi of this limit over here. But since phi is continuous, I can pull that limit out. This is the limit as n goes to infinity of what? Of phi of the sum j goes from 1 to n, f of j over n, 1 over n, like that. And now I can use convexity, right? And so this is less than or equal to the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum j goes from 1 to n, of phi of f j over n, 1 over n. <clears throat> and then what is that? That's exactly equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of phi of f of x dx, right? So in other words, the integral, phi of the integral, if phi is convex, is less than or equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of phi of f of x dx. And that's a continuous version of Jensen's inequality. And of course, this is true for the integral, integral, integral from 0 to 1, but it's also true if I have any unit, uh, any interval of unit length. The same argument works over here because the key feature is that that's going to be a convex combination. And so Jensen's inequality transcends from the discrete case to the continuous case in this fashion. Thank you very much.